Hey guys, welcome back to Fix It Friday, the weekly YouTube series where we talk about video game console repairs, mods, and restorations. And for this week, I have a Panasonic Q, and this one is not only like immaculate, but it's also complete in box, and it even has the instruction manual and uh, the remote control. I mean, this is so cool. You never see these in general, but then to see one so pristine and complete as this is just awesome. So yeah, this one has a couple of issues. Um, one issue is that it um, it doesn't uh, it doesn't seem to be reading games properly. So so you know it can play audio CDs okay, but whenever it tries to play uh, GameCube games, it's very intermittent. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this thing apart, see if I can do anything about adjusting that laser, and see if I can get the laser calibrated a little bit better. Maybe I can adjust it. And, uh, and the other thing I'm going to do as well is I'm going to add a region switch to this so that you can toggle between a USA firmware and a Japanese firmware. And this allows the person who owns this to very easily play games in the United States. So, so yeah, we're going to go ahead and take this thing apart and uh, see what we can do to uh, get it working again. All right, let's get started. All right, so I kind of uh, skipped all of the fun of disassembly here, and I've gotten all the way down to the Panasonic Q motherboard, which is just sitting right here at the very bottom. Um, the reason why I decided to leave this uh, off camera is because I actually already did a very detailed teardown video, uh, complete teardown for the Panasonic Q. So there's kind of no reason to film that twice when it's already available and you guys can easily watch it, and I'll put a link in the description. Um, so yeah, this is the Panasonic Q motherboard, and it's basically the same as a standard GameCube motherboard. There's only a few minor differences. One is that the multi-out connector is replaced with this kind of connector, which is a little different. And the digital port, which normally just sits here, is instead replaced by this kind of, you know, daughter board, which, which goes in its place here. But otherwise, this is a completely standard GameCube. Um, you can, in fact, replace this with a, another GameCube, and if you just swap out these connectors, it'll totally work in a Panasonic Q. So there's really nothing special about this, um, apart from these two connectors here. So... I took this all apart because what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be replacing, uh, or we're going to be installing a switch. So I wired this up earlier, and um, this switch will allow me to toggle between American and Japanese firmwares. And uh, we're going to zoom in, and I'll show you exactly where that switch gets installed, and we'll uh, we'll take things from there. All right. So what we have here is the main processor for the GameCube, and it's called the Flipper, which is kind of cool. And um, You'll notice here that there are two resistors. There's one up here, one over here, and then there's an empty space here in the center. And so on a Japanese uh, GameCube, that's normal. And uh, what you can do is if you put a switch over here in this open space, um, what it'll allow you to do is if you toggle it in one way, it'll be in American firmware. And if you toggle it this way, it'll be Japanese firmware. Um, so you can only do this with an American or a Japanese GameCube. You can't do this with the European ones, but you know, it's pretty cool. You can do this on all of them, including, you know, just standard stock GameCubes, not just for a Panasonic Q. Um, and it makes it very easy to play the Japanese library um, or the American library, respectively, depending on which kind of GameCube we're talking about. So what I'm gonna do is just solder this to these two points right here. They're very tiny, so it's tricky. You've gotta use some tweezers to uh, to get those in position. And I might actually have to rotate the board here. Yep. Just because I'm left-handed. And so I've got to have my dominant hand controlling the soldering iron and my non-dominant hand kind of getting everything into position. So it's complicated. And uh, you guys will probably end up doing the reverse because most of you will be right-handed. Okay. Oops. Ah, oh, that's what happens. <laughs> All right, let me add some fresh flux. Try again. Okay. So now I think we're all set. 
Uh, so yeah, at this point I have to reassemble the GameCube and I'm going to position that switch somewhere that's unobtrusive uh, and so that it can be accessed if someone opens up one of the side panels of the Panasonic Q. Alright, so we'll be back in a second. Alright, so I've gone ahead and reassembled the Q, at least for the most part, and so what we've got left here is the DVD drive, which as you can see is absolutely insane. <laughs> so it's got like two boards controlling it. I'm going to assume this lower board here is related to the GameCube because it connects directly to the GameCube. Um, but right now, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two boards off and I want to see the actual laser assembly itself because I'm hoping that I can find a potentiometer to adjust on it and hopefully increase the output power of the pot so that it can um, read GameCube games more reliably because right now it's very inconsistent. Sometimes it reads them, sometimes it doesn't. And that's something you see with standard GameCubes and usually you can very easily fix that by just strengthening the power of the laser by a small amount. Um, so that's my plan here. I'm going to take this thing apart some more and, uh, and then after that uh, see if I can find a potentiometer for the DVD portion of it and see if I can adjust that laser and make it a little better. Okay, so we've disassembled the drive, and now we're all the way down to the laser, and um, so th what you can see here is that the laser has two potentiometers. One of them is for adjusting the power for readings of CDs, and the other one, which is this guy right here, is adjusted for reading DVDs and GameCube games. Um, so you can, you can change the resistance value on this to make it stronger or weaker, and that in turn will kind of make it optimal for reading discs. Um, so for this particular case, we, don't, we can ignore this because it is totally reading CDs. There's nothing to do, no issues at all with CDs. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use my multimeter, and I have it um, in this omega symbol. This is for reading impedance. And uh, if you have a multimeter, you should have a similar kind of setting on it as well. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just putting the leads between this lower leg here and the center leg, and I'm reading the, um, the impedance value. And it comes out to be about 5.75 um, kilo ohms, I believe. So I'm going to go ahead and... Um, adjust this potentiometer and I'm going to make that impedance lower and that usually means that the lasers um, gonna be outputting more power so hopefully that means that it'll read the games um, more consistently so I'm gonna go ahead and do that um, this might take me a couple of tries as I try to find an optimal value but I'm gonna go back and forth and make adjustments at least I know what the original value was so I can easily go back to it if I need to okay so um, I'll be back in a little bit and I'll let you guys know what happened. All right, so I have the Panasonic Q mostly reassembled. Um, I deliberately left this panel off so that you guys could see that this is where the little toggle switch is. And right now I have it uh, set to American and you can tell that because everything is displayed in English. So um, so yeah, it makes it very easy to switch between USA and Japan. And uh, I actually spoke to the owner of this Panasonic Q. He doesn't even own any games. Um, that are J Japanese, so this is perfect because it means that he can actually play his library uh, using this Panasonic Q. All right, so uh, as for the laser adjustment, so I took it from 5.75 kilo ohms and I adjusted it down to four kilo ohms. And that might sound like a lot, but that was really just a very small turn counterclockwise that I made. I mean, a very tiny adjustment. Um, I would recommend trying that. If you have laser issues with your Panasonic Q, bring it down to something like maybe 4 kilo ohms. Um, you know, there's going to be a sweet spot, so if you dial it in too much, you're not going to get anything. And um, and obviously, if you don't turn it enough at all, like if it's maybe 5 kilo ohms, maybe that's not going to be enough to read games. Um, but anyhow, that's what worked in this case, because now if we go ahead and we, we reset the console, let me just do that real quick.
And yeah, there you go. You see it loads up right away. No issues whatsoever. All right, so we've got another rare console fix. We've got a Panasonic Q in perfect working order. Um, so yeah, that's it for this video. If you guys like what you saw, then um, definitely feel free to give me a like or subscribe to the channel. I've got videos coming out like this every Friday. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Like, Do you like this hidden um, approach to the region switch, or would you prefer to have it outside of the case? So yeah, let me know what you guys think. And uh, thanks again for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.